Hello, everyone. Um, so, yeah, my name's Alan Vey. I'm the founder of Aventus, and we are all about onboarding enterprises into Web3. But I'm going to spend a bit of time today talking about our clients in the loyalty space uh, in particular. So let's start with a little bit um, on the definitions, right? We, when we talk about Web3, we've got this evolution of the internet where Web1 was essentially the static internet where you were reading information. Web2 was the kind of user-generated content, dynamic internet where you were writing information back. You had social media explode in that phase. And now we're moving into Web3. And Web3 is all about owning, read, write, and own. You have the ability to, for the first time, actually own things in the digital sphere. And there's so many interesting opportunities, especially in the, the sort of loyalty NFT world that have come out of this. So you can see here, I think, one of the most interesting trends to track is user numbers of the adoption of the internet plotted against user numbers of the blockchain, Web3. All of these terms, Web3, NFTs, whatnot, or, or blockchain, NFTs, are all kind of subcategories of Web3 in the way we look at it. So right now, I would argue that we are in the equivalent of the kind of uh, dot-com bust that happened for the internet, right? Markets are depressed. You can see user numbers here are tracking in 2023 very close to the numbers in 2000 of internet adoption. And what happened right after that was obviously an explosion in value from Microsoft, Amazon, Google, those kind of companies. And we feel that right now the various players in this industry are starting to differentiate themselves and we'll see who is the Microsoft or Google of the Web3 world. A very interesting stat as well is by 2024, 25% of enterprises are going to be interacting with their customers via Web3. We've already seen 70, 75 of the world's biggest brands uh, adopt loyalty-based programs. So if there's nothing else you walk away with uh, from my talk here today, it's that the time is now. Things are really starting to happen versus the last few years. Quick intro on Aventus. Aventus, we're really all about onboarding enterprises to Web3. This is very important to focus on keeping things simple. It's obviously very complicated technology. Um, mitigating risk, everybody sees the bankruptcies and the hacks, helping people understand uh, how to try and avoid those missteps and ultimately, obviously, adding value through the proposition, looking at real use cases rather than one-off proof of concepts. So I'm going to start with some of our loyalty success stories and then we'll really move into film just to give you an example of how interconnected the, the industry is and this technology is and the kind of network effect that can be achieved when you join various different uh, sort of walks of life together. So number one, Beatport. This is, uh, for those of you who don't know, in the, in the world of music, they've got around 50 million users, 100,000 labels. We're supporting them in realizing a, a sort of digital fan club strategy looking at how you can create more stickiness within your community, how you can have that sort of uh, community-driven creativity as part of the process. Lucas was here talking about that a second ago. Um, then things as sort of more traditional finance payments, if you look at cashback app, this is loyalty points, restructuring what those points look like. Again, this is improving the user experience. You're creating closed economies of users who can interact with each other and really benefit from that network effect and massively reduce the kind of uh, balance sheet debt that it takes to operate something like this and generate new revenues. I think an interesting one here to mention as well is Fruit Lab. Fruit Lab is a platform that uh, does video games. So they create um, different content, social media content around video games. Um, and with 800,000 users that they have, they've looked at an NFT strategy. All of these will be partnering with some of the film endeavors that we're doing. They, they've got an NFT strategy around how you earn from creating content around whatever the IP itself is. So Web3 for film. What we have the ability to do, right, what blockchain has given us is essentially a tool that uh, that we never previously had within sort of software development. You have the ability to represent this digital scarcity. And when you apply that to the film industry, it has far-ranging applications from the inception of films, how you can finance films. The, uh, some of you may have seen the crowd financing models that have started through phases of production 
uh, there are different use cases that you may have seen where those who buy NFTs or digital collectibles associated with films have the ability to become extras within the film, maybe they get some of the props, uh, the various ways of engaging people through that phase, and then to production and release. Uh, we have two films that we will be launching uh, very soon, and I'll give you a bit of an example of how you can build uh, an interesting NFT strategy. The one film is going to be launching soon, um, so it's a brand new film. Here you look at selling uh, NFTs which are se essentially being part of that experience. Like people, when a new piece of music is released, you see people in the comments be like, oh, first to comment or whatever it is. You have the ability to sort of get involved, show you're involved early. You can get involved in the premiere and then have different benefits as you move through that kind of life cycle of the film. The second film that we will be launching uh, is an old film. I think everybody here will know it. Unfortunately, I can't say what it is yet, but it'll be releasing next week. But it's been around for a decade. It's one of the biggest independent films ever. And here we're looking at celebrating the experience of this film. So people can buy a ticket, I say a $100 ticket to be involved in the experience. And because of how novel, the, the kind of independent nature of this, you're able to celebrate this film by using clips that haven't been seen before, different takes of iconic scenes. You can celebrate the IP in the metaverse with different events where people can participate, um, in real life events. Ultimately, obviously, the success of these things and drawing in the celebrities typically hinges on a successful initial release, but there's meet and greets in the real world, and then looking at community-driven creativity. So some of you may have seen, if you're familiar with the sort of bored apes, right? They did this really well. Launched these apes and then a token where you have community-driven governance and you can decide on different decisions. And we're doing that in the film now as well. So give people the ability to vote on how you're telling the story, which partners you're celebrating with, um, and how you kind of roll out that story that is the celebration of the IP, what scenes you feature, who you partner with, things like that. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to leave you with here today. A lot happening in the film space. More and more you've seen different people getting involved. Um, and please do come and check out what we have launching next week. Thank you.